This is a whoosh rocket. This is the simplest type of rocket you can make, but in actuality it's just a soda bottle with a hole in the lid and some butane inside. The butane burns and releases CO2, water and heat. The heat evaporates the water and what you get is a bunch of hot gases trying to expand somewhere. Luckily for them, they have this hole downstairs. They rush through the hole and create a jet that propels the entire bottle up. The bottle is the combustion chamber, the hole is the nozzle, the butane is the fuel and the air is the oxidizer. Oh, I forgot to mention the oxidizer. Yeah, you do need oxygen to have combustion. Air has some oxygen, but you know what has more oxygen? Oxygen. As you can see, oxygen really helps with combustion. But wait a second. If combustion does like air, why is it that when I blow compressed air on a candle, the candle goes out? Well, combustion does like air, but if you put too much of it too quickly into the reaction, you actually remove the fuel out of the equation and you cool the reaction, which is no bueno. On the other hand, you kind of want to be able to inject as much oxidizer as possible, so you can burn as much fuel as possible, and thus get as much whoosh as possible. So how does one do that? Well, that's the million dollar question. And the million dollar question has a million different answers. Let's start with the first one. Not all fuels are born equal, and all of them need different amounts of oxidizer to burn. There's this thing called air to fuel ratio, which tells you how much air you need to burn a certain amount of fuel. For example, to burn 1.3 grams of gasoline, you need 15 times the same amount of air. Each 1 liter bottle holds 1.3 grams of air, so to burn this, you would need 15 bottles of air. That's a lot of air, and that's the reason why you turbocharge your car. A turbo is basically a fan that pushes air into the engine. If you don't want to spend all that air, you can just use methanol. Methanol is a special kind of alcohol, and to burn the 1.3 grams we talked before only requires 6 bottles of air. Propane would need also 15 bottles, like gasoline, butane also 15 bottles, hydrogen would require 34 bottles, I don't have that many bottles, and nitromethane would need only 2 bottles. Wait, 2 bottles? That's really low, that's even lower than methanol. How is that possible? Oh, okay. Look at the formula for nitromethane. Do you notice anything weird? Yeah, it comes with its own oxygen, which means it doesn't really need much air to burn it. Now, nitromethane might be weaker than gasoline, but because it requires 9 times less air than gasoline, well, you can burn a lot of it. That's what they do in the top fuel drag racing competitions. They use 90% concentration nitromethane, and as you can see the results speak for themselves. Nitromethane is also used in two-stroke engines for RC cars, and believe it or not, despite of only using 25% concentration nitromethane, these little chihuahuas are more power dense than a Formula 1 car engine. Actually, the only kind of engine that is more power dense than these little guys is a rocket engine. Right, rocket engines. That's what we're talking about. Sorry. Uh, so, imagine we want to make a rocket engine. And as fuel, we use butane, which is really easy to get, also cheap. And as an oxidizer, we use air, which is even easier to get. Now what we need is a way to inject both the butane and the air into a combustion chamber, and at the same time, mix them. For that, we need an injector. This is a swirl injector. It has this particular name because both the air and the fuel are injected as counter-rotating vortices that are then smashed together inside the combustion chamber. The swirl injector you see on screen is actually from a Danish company called Copenhagen Suborbitals. As you can imagine, they make rockets. This here is a swirl injector that I designed myself and 3D printed, and it works pretty well. Now, to test the performance of said injector inside a combustion chamber, I have this piece of quartz tube which can withstand up to 1500 degrees Celsius and also, if you didn't notice, is transparent. Guessing that's the most important detail. Let's give it a test. Okay, um, that was intense, but I just realized how stupid I am because I was talking about how quartz can take 1500 degrees Celsius and I'm using an injector in PLA which can barely withstand 80 degrees Celsius, so yeah, should probably do this in metal. Now, to make the new swirl injector out of metal, I'm gonna use my new CNC machine. Yes, I have a CNC machine now.
Yes, I have fallen in love with this machine called Carvera. It's super easy to use because it has automatic tool changing, automatic bat leveling, and the most important thing, a compressed air nozzle that blows the ships away. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was not prepared for how awesome this was gonna look. I mean, it was a freaking fire tornado. Still, it looks pretty cool, but uh, it's not a rocket. For it to be a rocket, it needs a nozzle. And a nozzle can be something as simple as a hole. And for the time being, that's exactly what we're gonna use. Moving on. Okay, let's get some stuff straight. The swirl injector performed pretty well. I think it read about 8 meters per second in the anemometer, which is fine, it's pretty good, but I don't think the swirl injector is the best fit for this kind of rocket, especially at this size. I have another idea, and my other idea is this one. This is an annular combustion chamber, commonly used in jet engines, and because it works so well on jet engines, it might just work perfectly here as well. In this one I'm using a 3D printing brass nozzle to inject the fuel, and straight on injecting the compressed air here. This outer tube is acrylic which I promise will not melt because the compressed air is gonna protect it. The actual combustion chamber is the glass tube with holes in it. The holes are to help distribute the air evenly throughout the combustion chamber. Not to brag, but already bragging, I was right. This engine performed twice as well as the other one, and I'm not even using a proper nozzle. But what if I did? What if I used the best nozzle possible for this engine? The specific engine using butane and air to get the most thrust possible. How would I do that? Well, that's where things get tricky, because nozzle design is the exact thing that makes rocket science the standard of very hard, non-achievable, impossible. Luckily for us, someone condensed all of this in a very neat and free software called RPA. This one right here. The first thing that it asks you is the chamber pressure, which in my case it would be about 6 bars. My compressor can put out about 8, but to be safe, I'm gonna put down 6 bars. The second thing that it asks you is the mass flow rate of both the fuel and the oxidizer. In my case, it's gonna be mostly oxidizer, which is air, so I need to find a way to calculate the mass flow rate that my compressor can put out. To get that value, I plug my compressor into a big tube, measure the output speed using my anemometer, and convert that speed into mass flow rate. And that gives me about 0.016 kilograms of air per second. I choose my oxidizer, my fuel, and I say I want the exhaust pressure to be one atmosphere. And that's it. Not only I get the dimensions of the perfect nozzle, but also the ideal combustion chamber dimensions and the estimated thrust, which in this case is about 2.7 kilograms of force. I made three nozzles out of graphite, which can withstand up to 3000 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna test the three and see if you can guess which one is the... Three, three. Money. My, which one takes the money? In the news. Have you heard the news? Mazda is releasing a new sports car. It's called the Mazda Iconic SP, and it's a rotary one. You know what that means. The spinning Dorito is back. Yes, the Wankel engine is back. Now, if you can't really afford the car, like me, you can get the next best thing, my commemorating Wankel engine poster. This one right here. I made it myself. A lot of you guys were asking about this poster you see in the background of my videos. This is a poster commemorating the Wankel rotary engine. More specifically, the 3D printed version that I made. I made this poster because I wanted a Wankel Rotary Engine poster to put in my shop. And to be honest, I couldn't find a cool one online. So, I made it from scratch. And, not to brag, this one looks pretty cool. If you want to get a poster like this, you can get it in my website, at intagza.com. The first 20 posters to be sold will be personally signed by me. Thank you so much for your interest, and thank you so much for supporting the channel. Moving on.
it's a success. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, it's not very practical to use my compressor as a source of oxidizer for this rocket. Especially a rocket this size. Yeah, I need something a little bit lighter. And the solution is to get the pure stuff. You remember how I said that air doesn't really have a lot of oxygen? Well, actually it only has 21%. The rest is nitrogen. That also means that if I use pure oxygen, I only need 21% of the mass flow. Which is great, but there's a tiny aside. This is the smallest bottle of oxygen I could get, so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to make this work. I'm also making the rocket engine out of steel this time, because oxygen is no joke. See that? Oh my god. I'm actually scared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to put it into words, but I'm very excited, but very scared still. Jesus Christ. Let's do it again. So while I was working on this project, a thought occurred to me. Why is it so easy to get liquid fuels at room temperature that are very powerful, but not easy to get the same thing for oxidizers? So I start looking in books, scientific articles, even Wikipedia. And I think I stumbled upon something very interesting that was hiding right under my nose. This is hydrogen peroxide, 50% hydrogen peroxide to be specific. At this concentration is neither too dangerous or too toxic. I've built rockets with it in the past, uh, because hydrogen peroxide, when it decomposes, it turns into a lot of steam. But I completely ignored the second thing that comes out of this reaction. Oxygen. Tons and tons of oxygen. By the way, there's a lot of great liquid oxidizer at room temperature. The problem is that most of them are either really hard to get or very, very toxic. So, right here I have a mixture of hydrogen peroxide with methanol. Now, normally I would use potassium permanganate to decompose the hydrogen peroxide, which would generate a lot of steam. But this time, I'm adding combustion to the mixture. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. There you go, now we have a great oxidizer. <laughs> and it's very compact. Oh my god, this channel is gonna kill me. So, what happened here and kind of uh, still is happening is when I throw the potassium permanganate inside, it starts decomposing the hydrogen peroxide into both steam and oxygen. The oxygen burns the methanol and the heat of that reaction kind of superheats the steam and we get basically a dual propulsion rocket? Yeah, it's very efficient. I'm gonna do pretty interesting stuff with this reaction in my channel. Expect a dual propulsion rocket coming. In the meantime, I wanna help you guys uh, do some projects. So I'm gonna give a 3D printer away. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comments suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was XC101. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will win a brand new 3D printer. Um, if you already have a 3D printer, you can get access to every single 3D model I used in this video in my website at intagza.com. And also get a poster. Please, don't forget the poster. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, 
tomatoes are disgusting. So yeah, 